women have the right to govern their bodies and it's right. time to shut our mouth no lul lul it's a joke man i'm joking i'm joking chatters oh my god i forget that there's like normies <laughs> comrades here stay safe why press the uncommitted people on a trump presidency if trump wins is because kamala is in his 30 blood passing children not because of the uncommitted vote i think that um press has one press has one speed on this just like everybody else has one speed on this which is like which is always the same it's like oh well what about trump at the event they also have the jump 625 jump. right now so what is it laser what laser sign probably what is this? Imagine admitting that you ban evaded to complain to a streamer about the mods, about their mods. I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen people say Trump will end the like, what the f Yes, dude, I know. This is a classic example of a big tent party is counterproductive. No, it's a, it's an entirely a matter of who's in the tent and who's not. What did you know? Everybody likes the guy who mouth screaming about children at the Lego store. Everybody thinks that that should definitely be the national campaign strategy. Oh my God, bro. They go off of this. Hillary Clinton could become president. I don't want to write that into the, I don't want to put that in writing. I don't want the DNC to hear me say this. Okay. You, you're going to make Kamala Harris president. That's what you're going to do. Can't believe I said that out loud. Oh my God. Oh no. Now it's going to happen. I, yeah, yeah. What is it? What have you done? Bean, not bean. Yeah, no. Everybody likes the guy who is... What? They are. No. What the... No, dude. I've been calling Republicans weird and how they're campaigning. Not they are. What's wrong with you? Some chatters should have been left behind. How they're campaigning on cultural war issues will lead to easier Democratic wins for a minute. It's their... No. What? There's so many... No. Their campaign or their campaigning also works. No. Their campaigning on culture issues works and their campaign on cultural issues also works but it's still there i am correct oh my god what is happening wait what the f oh my god the amount of people in this chat it's there it'd be they are if you said campaign on cultural issues what you played too much of the fighting now we are <laughs> bro it's there no it's not oh my god oh my god oh my god I can't, I don't know if this is like victims of communism in the chat or what's going on. What's happening here? This is making me really reconsider ever listening to chat ever again for the rest of time. Huh. Hassan, there's a valid reading with there and there. No, they are doesn't work here. I've been calling Republicans weird and how they are campaigning on cultural issues will lead to easing, uh, lead to easier Democratic wins for a minute doesn't work. I've been calling Republicans weird, period. They are campaigning on cultural issues, and this will lead to easier Democratic wins for a minute, period, would work, okay? Those are two separate ways of writing it. They are only works if you write it in the way that I just said the second time. You're wrong. You can't just swap out there here with they are and expect this to work. It doesn't work at all. Who is like foaming out of the mouth, screaming about children at the Lego store. Everybody thinks that that sh campaign strategy should definitely be the th grammar wise either way. I am correct grammar wise either way. And I'm going to keep going with the way that I wrote it. It's not swapping anything. They simply work both in the way that you have the sentence structured. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. In the way that that current sentence is structured, they are does not work. You're wrong. It literally does not. Oh my God. I'm literally ESL. Why the f can I speak English better than monolinguist this is crazy this is crazy confidently incorrect is what is going on in here there's so many words just confidently incorrect what the hell's going on chat was literally joking about me saying that that fighter can't read a whole book meanwhile y'all are also apparently incapable of writing a paragraph um all right let's keep Voter going support for the top of the democratic ticket has increased over the past month according to two abc news washington post polls Harris has 78% of the black male vote versus Joe Biden 72% from July. Trump's support is 19% to 16 percentage points. Now, pundits often talk about these voters, but they don't speak with black male voters often. So this morning, something different, some real talk. I brought together a group of black men, five men of different ages, different priorities, different political leanings. We watched Harris's historic speech Thursday night and then we talked about the big issues. Give me one word to describe her acceptance speech. Anthony, you first. Uh, I'll say presidential. Omar? Textbook. 
Charles. Political. Henry. I would say say. Hakeem. Inspirational. When she first walked out, uh, she was warm. She's, she was taking it all in, and it felt like she was uh, really enjoying the moment uh, and really having it settle on her with the, with the crowd. I think that the acceptance speech overall, uh, the themes were great. I mean, she talks about uh, the American people, uh, what folks wanted to hear from the middle, uh, about middle class, about anti-Trumpism, and really uh, through fear about you know what, what we should expect with the second term of Trump. But she really hit, hit hit the nail on the head. I think that she did a great job at galvanizing the American people. Um, textbook uh, play when it comes to acceptance speech. Uh, I think she fell short with speaking about economics, and I and I do understand that her overall speech has to be for the American people, and it's not the time to kind of get a little direct toward what we may want to hear. I was very surprised that. Uh, she did, you know, speak about her father. At the park, my mother would say, stay close. But my father would say, as he smiled, run, Kamala, run. Don't be afraid. Don't let anything stop you. You know, for me, it's all about values as well. Um, for me, I am a Black man with a family. And, uh, you know, Anthony made the point about the connection. Um, when she... For me, mentioning her father, you know, uh, who is a black man. Uh, for me, what makes her black is her father, not an HBCU, uh, not uh, a, a, a sorority. And so that's the connection I'm looking for. I was looking to hear more about policy. I think a lot of us were. Bro, every single person I've listened to from this uh, speech has had the same exact take that I had. She did a great job. She did a great job tying her own personal story to her message. Okay. The introduction was solid. And then that they wanted to hear more policies from her, which is what I, which is what I w was saying as well. And in terms of like, obviously, uh, the disagreements that I have, a lot of people also recognize what she did as an extension of Biden. Okay. You did mention you were surprised hearing about her father. Yes. Um, because she, because her father and her mother uh, divorced when she was like six and he famously was not in her life. Her father also, her father also actually disowned her publicly in the 2019 primaries when she said, uh, when she went on the breakfast club and talked about like how she's Jamaican. And of course she loves smoking the ganja or some shit like that. And her father was very upset. It was her best speech in terms of delivery. Her public speaking was at her best there, but the content of the speech itself was hollow at parts, vague in others, and dangerous and scary with all the immigration. I agree. Yeah. And so I didn't hear his own strong a lot word about policy. No, he did. He literally said, "How dare you equate like? How dare you equate being Jamaican he to like the stereotypes of smoking?" I did not weed, expect her to, especially as a prosecutor who put people in prison for speak it. Speak heavy on policy. Very rarely will you ever see a presidential candidate in an acceptance speech or even on a stump uh, speak with details on policies. It's what we do after they get elected and get in office and holding their feet to the fire is where we as black men and as a black community have failed in this time, we cannot fail. I didn't hear the things uh, from an economical standpoint that I was looking for. My main question here is that if you happen to get back in office for another four years, is that is what are you gonna do? You're gonna rinse and repeat here. We all pay the exact same for gas and for food. You have families living from paycheck to paycheck. Some can't even make it to paycheck to paycheck. Anthony, um, do you believe the polls that show that black men in a substantial way are shifting to former President Trump? I was in the barbershop today, right? And there's there's this real kind of um, resolve that a lot of folks who are younger millennials are having, which is, hey, I make a little bit of money. Uh, I want to keep my money, right? Uh, and and the country has never really worked for black men, so what do I have to lose? Uh, and so black men are beginning to uh, to vote with their pocketbooks. Um, and, and I think that that's uh, that misguided, but I think with, uh, I think the Democratic Party has failed to uh, what it has to offer the black man specifically. I don't want a black man's policy. <laughs> right. I don't want I a black man's policy. I, I want a policy that's going to be applied across the board. And since I'm black, I can benefit from it 
and understand capitalism and understand how to navigate. And we're never going to get a black man's policy. Henry, um, you wanted to hear a message that you said was not through the language of social justice. What does that mean? There's more to black men than uh, social justice and, and, and these problems with uh, police. Uh, I just feel like a lot of politicians, they feel like the only way to talk to black men is through that language about social justice. This cycle, they are leaning into her experience as a prosecutor. I think that is net positive. I mean, there's nothing that anyone can say to make me feel as though I have more in common with Donald Trump than Kamala Harris. But this is, has has become the center because of its relationship to black men and this idea that we we can we can sever black men from Kamala Harris if we just say she's she puts us in jail. And I feel like that's like a, a, a complete fallacy. What is the relevance of of here. Sexism is as pervasive in this country as it is. Do you think it's going to hurt her with voters, men, black men specifically? You know, the black community, uh, for us, we're used to women being in leadership. So for us, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I would say that I, I agree and disagree. Um, I think it, it may be a problem because a lot of African-American business, particular black, uh, black men. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's correct. Also, that's why Trump's questioning whether Kamala Harris is black or not. <clears throat> Talking about how Kamala Harris is a DEI candidate. All that sh actually plays really poorly. All that sh plays really poorly to uh, to any any like black male voter in the margins, which is already a tiny fraction um, for the Republican side anyway. But it absolutely plays uh, negatively because every black person at the end of the day, unless they're like completely brain broken, has heard this narrative before, the DEI narrative, affirmative action. Like, you don't deserve your job. You're only there because you're only there because you're black. That you took your job, that you took that job away from a more uh, deserving white person. Like, they know what that is. What? His perspective is black people are not a monolith. Hassan's chat treats black people like a monolith 50% of the time. What? I hope you're black because if you aren't, stop saying this. Yeah, this is not an appropriate thing to say. Um, male business feel a little threatened because there's a huge movement when it comes to black woman uh, business. And so, number one, we shouldn't let them divide us that particular way. But there, the yeah. movement is so great for African American uh, women, and we support yeah. them. And we want that. And sometimes I think African American men can feel like they're outpacing us when we should be together about. at the exact same time. How real? Why can't you ever be normal about black people? Um, what do you think? It's a very white community. When have when have white people been normal? Even when they're trying to be good, even when they're trying to be good allies. When the fuck have white people ever been normal by black people, bro? What do you mean? How is this a unique experience for you right now? <laughs> I mean, you know how it is. You know how it is everywhere else. Also, chat is not normal about not just black people, but like it's everything. I have to yell at chat all the time about being normal. It's a learning process. This community is significantly more um, agreeable than any other place on the internet. I'm gonna ban you now. Every time I forget you're Canadian and from Toronto, you have to remind me with this. Also, black Canadian chatter using lull. Relevant is um, her support for a woman medical decisions about her body. It's the woman the body, so she should be able to dictate her terms of her body. The Lord made life. Jesus Christ made life. And you have to value life. I guess the Thomas Sowell reading seminar didn't fully escape you with your usage of lull, you know? It takes a long time to unlearn. And sometimes it manifests. That anti-blackness sometimes manifests itself in different ways. Like being a black chatter that uses lull. <laughs> So Kamala wants to take life. There's so much that we don't know as men that we can't, that we don't have the privilege to opine on. Like we will never have a period. We will never go through childbirth. So to even fix our mouths to comment on how, I don't care what God said it, women have the right to govern their bodies. And it's right. time for men to shut our mouths. No, lul, lul. It's a joke, man. I'm joking. I'm joking, chatters. Oh my God. I forget that there's like normies in here. LUL is like oftentimes in this community when someone uses LUL over Keg W, okay? It's usually some of the most, it's accompanied by some of the most screeds you've ever heard. I'm making a joke about a chatter that I know the background of, who I think if I'm not mistaken, yesterday said he read Thomas Sowell in his early days. I'm using him, making a mistake, telling me information about himself like this, 
against him to make a joke. It's a double joke, okay? It has nothing to do with him being from Canada or from Toronto. It's, it's, I'm doing an inside. It wasn't, I didn't read Thomas Sal. Wait, it wasn't, it wasn't fed haired shanks. It was someone else. Maybe it was a different chatter. I, I, I'm, I'm, um, it might've been a different chatter. It might not have been fed haired shanks. We were talking about Thomas Sal yesterday and another chatter said, and another chatter said that they had read Thomas Sal when they were younger and almost got duped. The fact that you remember any chatter that said out of the 40k people in here is impressive. I can't remember who it was. All those black chatters look the same? Yes. You seem to mix up your black folk, huh? That is a ridiculous assertion to make in this situation. There's usually 30 to 40,000 chatters in here. The fact that I even remember any kind of minute, any kind of distinction while making a joke, when I'm looking at, when I'm parsing through texts and pixels is crazy. Anyway. But yeah, no, there was a joke about using lol anyway. All right, what the fuck are we doing? You are a registered Republican. You now consider yourself to be an independent. Voted for Trump in 2016, Biden in 2020. Uh, going with this, you were leading Harris, but hadn't ruled out Trump. Did you hear anything in the speech that moved your vote or the likelihood in one direction or another? Not in this speech specifically, but... Over the past uh, month and within the last four days, uh, absolutely. And what was that? When you have uh, freedom, days of old, you would never hear a person speak about uh, autocrats or dictators the way Trump speaks of them. And the party allows him to continue to speak on them that way. Ronald Reagan is rolling over in his grave. And so um, oh, God. that's so far away from true conservative values. So I'm a fiscal conservative and I am a social liberal. What did you think of that section in which she said that Trump is strong or she said that Trump is friendly to autocrats because he wants- Dude, that's crazy, okay? God, this is, that is, that is a great, oh my God, dude. He said Ronald Reagan would be rolling in his grave. Ronald Reagan literally called black people monkeys. Like he called African diplomats monkeys, dude. What the fuck do you mean? How are you going to use him as a good example of like a, a good Republican president? And the only reason why I say that and not like all of the that he actually did that played a significant role in destroying the black community is because a lot of liberals are only tuned to that kind of optics equation. They don't ever think about the impact of policy wants to be an autocrat himself. What, what was your reaction to that? I just think it was just another lie. Um, and, you know, the, the left has a tendency to do this um, every time they're in front of a big crowd. Immigration has been uh, an attack line from Republicans uh, against the vice president. She talked about it in the speech. I know we can live up to our proud heritage as a nation of immigrants and reform our broken immigration system. We have millions of immigrants coming over here and what are they doing? They're taking black men's jobs. They're not taking black people jobs or white people jobs. They're taking indigent jobs, low paying jobs, working wow. in jobs Please. that most people and most Americans do not want to take. I'm curious to know from the other gentlemen, uh, do we feel it's the same Kamala Harris from, you know, 2020 that was running for president that we have now. Do we have a different Kamala Harris? Do we feel like she's gained more experience to step in this role? It's going to be more of the same. And because it's going to be more of the same, I think that we should put more pressure on her. And what's that look like? It's no different from the uh, the Latin community who just endorsed her and made headways on some of the things that they were asking for. We as an African-American community, we just never get that. So if we hold out until the last minute and have contingent plans, something concrete and right and that we know that she can champion, um, I say we hold on to that in order to put pressure on her. We've seen the Republican National Convention, the Democratic National Convention, they're both over now. If the election were to be held tomorrow, not who you'd vote for, but who do you think would win? Anthony? Uh, I think Kamala Harris takes it. Omar? I think Trump would take it if it was tomorrow. Charles? I feel strongly Trump would take it if it was tomorrow. Henry? If it was tomorrow, hands down, Kamala Harris. Hakeem? I'm going to go on a limb. If it was tomorrow, it's going to be a landslide, Kamala Harris.